One of the key messages that I keep on telling the audience is that in order to have perspective in the crypto space, you need to take both into consideration the macro factors and the micro factors. The macro factors or topics are, for example, the regulations, how the news are manipulated, for example, and those topics that could affect the current state of the market. On the other hand, the micro topic, the micro factors are those related to how the uh, technology is evolving. In this video, we're going to be studying and analyzing one of those topics that is crucial for you to have perspective and see how most likely the market and the technology is going to evolve in the following years and most likely decades. If you landed in this video, if you landed in this channel, it's because you like self-education and that you're ready to take your knowledge to the next level. So take notes and I look forward to see you till the end of the video. This video is brought to you by Money on Chain, which develops the first decentralized stablecoin that uses Bitcoin as collateral. Okay, we know that the main focus of the market is decentralization. The most secure, censorship resistant, decentralized, immutable, transparent, secure, open to innovation network that we have is the Bitcoin network. But what happens is that in order to modify the code of Bitcoin, it requires time, a process, it requires acceptance by the majority of the Bitcoin members in the network, and also the programming language of Bitcoin is very limited. So what has happened in the past is that for a period of time, a lot of alternative coins started to uh, appear proposing or offering things that could not be done by Bitcoin or on top of Bitcoin. For example, Ethereum. Ethereum, what allows us is to program smart contracts on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Now that is changing thanks to sidechains. Sidechains allows us to add functionalities to the Bitcoin network and also solve some of the scalability issues that Bitcoin has. So what is a sidechain exactly? A sidechain is a separate blockchain that is pegged to the Bitcoin main chain via a two-way protocol in the middle. So before we dive deeper and analyze and differentiate all the types of sidechains that we have, I want you to understand what a two-way peg protocol is. Let's go. The two-way peg protocol allows us to send cryptocurrencies from the main blockchain layer one to the secondary blockchain layer two. However, no cryptocurrencies are transferred. This is just an illusion. What happens is the following. Whenever I want to send certain amount of Bitcoins from the main blockchain to the secondary blockchain, those Bitcoins are going to be temporarily locked while the equivalent amount of coins are going to be unlocked or released in the secondary blockchain and vice versa. Whenever I want my Bitcoins unlocked again in the primary blockchain, the equivalent amount of Bitcoins have to be locked in the secondary blockchain in order for that to happen. This is a two-way peg promise, which is based on certain assumptions. Those assumptions are the following, that the main blockchain is censorship resistant, that the majority of the miners are honest, and that the majority of the third parties involved in the two-way peg system are also honest. So in order to enforce the security of the two-way peg system, you need to have good incentives for these participants to behave honestly. In order for a two-way peg to work, both blockchains, they need to have information about each other in order to know when they need to lock or release the funds. One way of doing so is through a multi-signature federation. A multi-signature federation is a group of notaries that serve as a middle layer between the main blockchain and the secondary blockchain. And their role is to vote algorithmically on whether they need to do so, release the funds or lock the funds. They control a multi-signature address for which the majority of them they, they need to approve and the downside of a multi-signature federation is that this can lead to centralization. For this reason, they need to be very carefully selected. All right, so far we have learned many concepts, but now is when it gets really interesting. Another type of two-way peg protocol is actually what a sidechain is. 
a sidechain does not require a third party in order for both blockchains to interact. A sidechain is a concept and another type of two-way pack protocol for which we need to learn and study what an SPB proof is, a simplified payment verification proof. And that is where we're going to do next before we dive deeper into what a sidechain is. SPB proof shows that I can prove to you that my transaction is included in a valid block and that miners have created a lot of next blocks on top of it. With SPB proof, I do not have a full copy of the blockchain. I only have a header of the block. So, so what I'm going to be proving to you is that, as I said, that my transaction, it is in a valid block and that a lot of miners have trusted that that block is correct and valid and therefore they have mined on top of it, forming the longest chain. All right, the way I'm going to provide to you SPB proof is as follows. I basically look at the block where my transaction is. I provide all the hashes along the Merkle tree branch where my transaction lies so that I can show to you that these hashes hash all the way up to the Merkle root. All right, so I am going to be showing to you that my transaction is part of that block, which is valid. Also, I'm going to be providing to you proof that um, I have the hash of the previous block and a correct nonce. With those two factors, I'm going to be showing to you that I have that, um, that the block has been mined with the correct difficulty level and that that block has been mined and that is valid, as I said before. All right, so now, the side chain or the Bitcoin main chain can both evaluate whether a transaction was conducted, all right, and whether that amount of money was locked before they release the equivalent amount of coins on its side. Okay, one thing we didn't mention before is that whenever we transfer from the main blockchain to the side chain or vice versa, there is always a confirmation period that is required after locking the transaction. It is required so that the miners can create the proof of work that is required for the SPB proof that we have just mentioned, all right? So once this is conducted and the SPB proof is submitted in the other chain, the other chain has a waiting period now that is called the reorg period. In this period, you have a time frame where anyone can submit an SPB proof which may actually contradict the original SPB proof provided before. Why? Because as we know, there is always a possibility that the SPB proof that was provided was in fact created by a malicious group of miners. Now, if the malicious group of miners uh, consist of less than 50% of the network, the SPB proof that they provided will be shorter than the longest chain in the actual network. Therefore, in the REOG or period, I can submit a reorg proof which has the same block, but this block now does not include the false transaction. And additionally, it has more proof of work conducted on it because there are more honest miners producing this block than in the false SPB proof. All right? So why do we do this? What is the conclusion? So this is how SPB proof can be used to validate whether a correct transaction was done to the other chain. Let's remember, we do not have third parties here. So this is what we use in order to see uh, and validate whether a correct transaction was conducted, all right? So as we saw, this assumes that we have a 51% of the miner acting honestly so that we can provide SPB proof which are correct now in the longest chain. However, 
Today, SPB proof base spec, they do not work with Bitcoin yet, okay? They do not work with Bitcoin yet. We cannot apply this on the Bitcoin side yet. Up next, we're going to analyze the last concept of the video, which is what a drive chain is. The difference between a side chain and a drive chain is that a drive chain gives custody of the unlocked coins to miners who are allowed to vote algorithmically whether they need to release or uh, lock the funds. These miners, they vote using the main chain and those votes are cast in part of the block. The greater the participation of the miners we have on a drive chain, the more secure it's going to be. So if we have less than 50% of miners participating on a drive chain, that means that there are chances that they are going to behave in a dishonest way and they could vote for something that is not correct. A drive chain, implementing a drive chain on Bitcoin, it requires a soft fork for miners to validate new roles, okay? And this is all the information that I needed you to know about a drive chain, as you can see on the screen. Next, we're going to apply all the concepts that we have just learned to one specific example, which is the RSK or Rootstock example. Let's go. RSK is the safest smart contract platform in the world, and it has a unique combination between all the concepts that we learned in this video. The aim of RSK is to add functionalities to the Bitcoin ecosystem because it allows it to program smart contracts on top of Bitcoin, okay? And also we can solve some of the scalability issues that we have with Bitcoin as well. The unique combination that I'm talking about that RSK has is between a side chain and a drive chain plus a multi-sig federation. As you can see on the screen, in the picture, we have on the RSK side, we have a side chain using SPB proof, okay? And on the Bitcoin side, we have a drive chain plus a multi-sig federation. But why? Why do we have this combination on the, on the Bitcoin side? And that is what I'm going to explain to you next. RSK uses a method that is called merge mining. Merge mining is unique because what it allows is for the miners who are securing the blockchain of Bitcoin, we know that we need a decentralized algorithm such as proof of work and the process of mining to secure the Bitcoin network. Now those miners can join the RSK uh, network blockchain and also secure that blockchain as well using the same amount of hashing power and electricity. Those miners, they are going to receive an extra source of income, which is a fee based on SBTC, which is a token on top of the RSK platform. So this is very good because the miners are having an extra source of income. They are using the same amount of hashing power to secure an extra blockchain, which is the RSK blockchain, okay? We know that um, the uh, RSK blockchain is a combination, it's a unique combination between a side chain and a drive chain plus a multi-sig federation. I told you that I was going to explain to you why. And this is the reason why, because we know uh, it's a drive chain on the side of Bitcoin because it's, uh, it gives the custody of the funds to the miners, okay? But in order for a drive chain to be very secure, you need a, the participation of the miners have to be very big, which means that in order for the drive chain of RSK to be very secure, to achieve a level of security, that it can be a drive chain by itself, they need to achieve like 90% of the miners. For that, they are going through a process they have not achieved that number of miners yet. And this is the reason, this is what it explains why they are using a combination between a drive chain plus a multi-sig federation. It requires, no blockchain has ever become decentralized from one day to the other. One, to the other. 
it requires a process. It takes time, and this is exactly what the blockchain of RSK is doing. This is a very unique case that I suggest that you keep on studying. But for now, this is all the information that I wanted to give you for um, about mer merch mining. And up next, I'm going to explain to you two more things about RSK that I need you to understand, which are really good and they contribute to the centralization of the Beacon network as well. These two extra characteristics that I wanted to highlight are the following. Number one, as we said, RSK is the safest smart contract platform in the world. It aims to add functionalities to the Beacon ecosystem by allowing it to program uh, smart contracts on top of it. And it also aims to solve some of the scalability issues that Bitcoin has, okay? What I wanted to highlight here is that the block, RSK blockchain is Ethereum compatible, which also unifies the whole ecosystem. This is very important that they are not, they are compatible and they can work together to make the technology evolve. That is number one. And the second characteristic that I wanted to highlight for you today is that RSK gives full nodes in both the Bitcoin network and the RSK network a reward. We know that full nodes are essential to contribute to the decentralization of the network. So it is very important that they are very good uh, reward in order to keep that decentralization and make it grow as well. So for the first time, a second layer drive chain on top of Bitcoin, which is RSK, uses part of their own income generated on their own layer, on their own second layer, to reward and contribute to the decentralization of the Bitcoin network, which is very important, in my opinion, to the whole ecosystem. That's why I wanted, uh, I wanted to highlight it for a second as well. I leave it to you then to think about how this, what we have just learned, can change the market. How the market can evolve in the following months and, and years and decades with the topic that we have just studied. As you saw, this video is sponsored by Money on Chain. Money on Chain is the very first decentralized stablecoin that uses Bitcoin as a collateral and it's built on top of RSK. Now you see why I chose to work with them. What they are doing, it contributes to the decentralization of the, of the market, which is the main focus of it. If you stayed until the end of this video, I congratulate you. I hope this video brought you value. I hope you learned a lot and I look forward to see you in the next one. So stay tuned and goodbye for now.